Marvin Gaye had a bitter relationship with his father, Marvin Gaye Sr., since his childhood. Marvin Sr. was a self-proclaimed Christian minister who was a strict disciplinarian and often physically punished his children. He was also a cross-dresser, which was widely known in the family's Washington, D.C. neighborhood and made the younger Marvin a target of bullying. It was because of this, added with rumors of Gay's own homosexuality, that he added an E to his last name when he became famous. Gay's father never approved of his son's career in music and gradually grew resentful that Gay was closer to his mother, Alberta, and had become the breadwinner for the family. Despite a brief improvement in their relationship after Gay found success with his album, What's Going On, both father and son never found any lasting peace. By 1983, after a period as a European tax exile, Gay had reemerged in the public eye with his hit song, Sexual Healing, and its album, Midnight Love. For a time, he had also achieved sobriety during his extensive stay in Belgium. Returning to the U.S., he embarked on his final sexual healing tour in April of that year. Gay, who had a profound dislike for touring, returned to cocaine abuse to cope with the pressures of the road. And midway through the tour, he developed a paranoia over an alleged attempt on his life wearing a bulletproof vest until he was on stage. In reality, there was little if any real danger. When the tour ended in August 1983, Gay returned to the U.S. to nurse his mother, who was recovering from kidney surgery. He moved into his parents' residence, a home he had bought for them back in 1973. During his stay, Gay's father was absent. That October, his father returned from a business trip in Washington, during which he purchased insurance on his family's previous residence. For the next six months, the two struggled to keep their distance from one another. During one quarrel at the house, the elder gay called police to have his son leave the property. After staying with one of his sisters, however, Marvin returned to the property, stating to a friend of his, after all, all I have is just one father. I want to make peace with him. On Christmas Day, 1983, Marvin gave his father a Smith & Wesson 38 Special pistol so that he could protect himself from intruders. Friends and family members contended that the young Marvin was often suicidal and paranoid and by now was afraid of leaving his room and spoke of little besides suicide and death. He sometimes wore three overcoats and put his shoes on the wrong feet. Four days before his death, according to his sister Jean, Gay had tried to kill himself by jumping out of a speeding sports car, suffering only minor bruises. Jean contended that there was no doubt Marvin wanted to die and that he couldn't take it anymore. In the days prior to his death, Gay's parents had arguments mainly over a misplaced insurance policy letter. The day before his death, the argument spread to Gay's bedroom. Angered by his father confronting his mother, Gay commanded Marvin Sr. to leave her alone. Marvin Sr. complied without incident and there was no violence that night. But Marvin Sr. continued yelling throughout the house. At approximately 12.30 p.m., on April 1st, 1984, an impatient Marvin Sr. shouted at his wife about the document. Gay, dressed in a maroon robe, shouted back downstairs, telling his father if he had something to say, he should do it in person. According to Alberta, when Marvin Sr. refused his son's request, Gay warned him not to come to his room. Marvin Sr., however, instead charged upstairs to the bedroom to verbally attack Alberta over the document, causing Gay to jump out of his bed and once again order his father out of the room. When ordering did not work, Gay, enraged, 
reportedly shoved his father out of the room into the hallway, then began kicking and punching him. Alberta would later say, Marvin hit him. I shouted for him to stop, but he paid no attention to me. He gave my husband some hard kicks. Jean later recalled that it was understood in the family that if one of the children ever dared to strike their father, that he would murder him or her. Saying her father made it very clear and said so publicly on more than one occasion. Gay reportedly followed his father to the bedroom and according to his mother, continued to kick him brutally. Eventually, Alberta separated Gay from his father and returned him to his bedroom. Minutes later, Marvin Sr. entered his bedroom, returning with the 38 pistol his son had earlier bought him, pointed it at Gay, and shot him directly in the heart. The first shot, which proved to be fatal, entered the right side of Gay's chest, perforating his right lung, heart, diaphragm, liver, stomach, and left kidney before coming to rest against his left flank. Afraid of being shot next, Alberta screamed and ran out of the bedroom, all the while pleading in fear to her husband not to shoot her. According to reports, Gay's father had hid the gun underneath his pillow. In the meantime, Gay's brother, Frankie, and his sister-in-law, Irene, heard the shots as they lived in a guest house on the property. After the first shot, Frankie initially thought it sounded like a car backfired. Afterwards, they heard screams from outside, rushed out, and saw Alberta, who ran into Irene's arms, shouting, He shot Marvin. He's killed my boy. Frankie ran into the house and carefully walked into the hallway to his brother's room. After walking into Gay's bedroom, an emotional Frankie held him as Gay bled rapidly. Frankie alleges that Marvin, barely speaking above a whisper, told him, I got what I wanted. I couldn't do it myself, so I had him do it. It's good, I ran my race. There's no more left in me. After police arrived, Irene went to Marvin Sr. in his bedroom and asked him where the gun was. After searching over his bedroom, Irene located it under his pillow. Upon exiting the house, Irene dropped the gun on the lawn. Immediately following this, Marvin Sr., who had by now taken a seat on the front porch outside the house, was arrested. During an interview with the police, Gay's father contended that he was scared that something would happen to him and that he only meant to shoot him in self-defense, stating he did not know the gun had any bullets in it, claiming he thought there were either blanks or BBs. When asked if he loved his son, Marvin Sr. reportedly stated in a soft voice, Let's say I didn't dislike him. Upon being told that his son had died from the shots, Marvin Sr. reportedly wept and sobbed after realizing he had killed his son.